Welcome to Mr. Gister. This video is going to be a brief history of sea shanties. Now if you aren't familiar with sea shanties, think songs like Drunken Sailor or Blow the Man Down. Think of your stereotypical salty sea dog and the gruff songs he would sing with his mates while pulling on ropes, swabbing decks, and doing other sailory activities. You might have noticed that sea shanties have blown up recently thanks to a few choice TikTok videos, so now's as good as time as any to give them a good gist. While sea shanties are now pure entertainment, they actually had a pretty important function back in the day. If you've ever taken part in an ill-fated, let's all jump at the same time, wedding photo, you know how hard it is to get a bunch of people to do the same thing at exactly the same instant. Operating a large sailing vessel with nothing but simple machines and manpower required crews to work in perfect harmony to accomplish specific tasks on ships. If they screwed up, it wouldn't just be a pissed off bridezilla. It could mean losing an anchor, sailors going overboard, or even the ship sinking. R.I.P. Jack. The etymology of the word shanty is unclear, but it most likely comes from the French verb chanter, meaning to sing. The word itself implies that the singing is being done at sea, so calling it a sea shanty is actually redundant. But don't be that pedantic jackass that goes around correcting everyone. People can call them sea shanties if they want. The spelling of shanty is not really standardized. You can basically spell it however you want as well. Sea shanties, as we know them today, have two major elements. One, they are worded songs sung in unison, as in they have a melody and they have lyrics. Two, the rhythm of the singing helps keep sailors in sync when they are doing specific tasks, pulling, pushing, pumping, etc. Stuff on ships is heavy, and moving that stuff requires teamwork. Prior to the mid-1800s, the two elements that make up sea shanties were present on ships but were not combined. Like so many of our favorite western music genres, sea shanties were at least in part inspired by black Americans. In the Americas, African slaves were well known for their work songs. This is well documented in all types of mostly horrible racist sources from the period. For example, in an article from 1806 titled, Dances of the Negroes in the Island of Martinico, the author writes, the Negroes have a very different air and words for every kind of labor. Sometimes they sing, and their motions, even while cultivating the ground, keep in time with the music. When slaves were set to work on ships, they would often be heard singing work songs. But singing slaves on ships does not a shanty make. Now during the same time, French and English sailors were known to use work chants and sing-outs. Have you ever been part of a group of people trying to push a car, and the car doesn't move until someone has the bright idea of saying, one, two, three, push, and everyone heaves together and your dumbass friend who has no idea how to drive in a New England winter finally gets out of that snowbank? Think of that scene, but with a little bit more maritime flair. Like, exactly like that. That's what sailors used to do when they were trying to synchronize their pulls on heavy ropes and shit like that. However, despite the name, these quote-unquote sing-outs were not organized songs. So again, they do not check the two boxes of what makes a true sea shanty. But as the 18th century came to a close, ships got larger, crews got smaller, schedules got tighter, and seamen needed to get more efficient. Clippers were a new type of ship that emerged towards the end of the 18th century. As the name implies, they were fast. They ran at a fast clip, hence the name. Now up until this point, cargo ships were generally slow and lumbering, but speed became paramount around this time because, well, globalism. The Brits did not want to wait for their tea, and they did not want the Chinese to have to wait for the opium they were trying to get them addicted to. Clipper ships sacrificed cargo space and crew size for speed, so everybody could get regular shipments of their vice of choice on a surprisingly regular schedule. With the shrinking of crew sizes, a need arose for increased synchronization to maximize manpower. Now how do you get a bunch of grizzled, grog-drunk sailors to pull when they are supposed to pull, push when they are supposed to push, and pump when they are supposed to pump? You teach them to sing. Sea shanties provided a framework to keep crews in sync. They would work together at regular intervals in rhythm to the sea shanties, and this system did not require any special equipment, just the dulcet tones of their scurvy-ridden vocal cords. Most shanties took a simple form. They were call and response, and the call was done by the shanty man. These shanty men were not voted in. Anyone could be a shanty man. But shortly into a voyage, after a few shitty shanties, it would become clear if your crew did not want you to be the shanty man. Think of the horrible shame of trying to start a let's go sports team chant and nobody joins in. After a while, you'd probably just stop trying. 
You ever see one of these things? This is called a capstan. Capstans were used basically as giant winches to haul heavy cables, like anchor lines. Crews would need to all step in rhythm to make sure that they were all moving the capstan at the same time and not wasting energy. To give you an example of how all this might work in practice, here's a questionable rendition of Blow the Man Down, being used here as a capstan shanty. Oh, blow the men down, bullies, blow the men down. To me, rain, hey, blow the men down. Blow the men down, bullies, blow him away. Give me some time to blow the men down. There are tons of other types of shanties, most of them defined by the type of task they were meant to accomplish or by the frequency of the work stroke, as in when the pushing, pulling, pumping was done. I should note that the shanties themselves were not assigned to specific tasks, as in, blow the man down could be used for a capstan shanty, a hand over hand shanty, a halyard shanty, etc. But on the crew level, there were definitely preferences for specific shanties being used for certain tasks. Apart from the synchronization aspect, shanties were also important because sailing is boring as hell and singing with your mates is fun. It was a good way to keep yourself entertained and build friendship among seamen. This leads me to another type of shanty, called the Forecastle Shanty. These were basically just songs that sailors sang, sometimes in classic shanty call and response form, sometimes in your classic Irish drinking song form, and sometimes they were just sung in unison. They were done purely for fun, usually in the forecastle where the crew's quarters were, hence the name. While not technically shanties because they did not accompany a task, this is likely where the popularity of shanties really blossomed. These sailors would go on shore leave and try to pick up port strumpets with their shanties. They would swap shanties with other sailors they ran across. And this is how so many shanties we still know today got so popular. With the advent of the steamship, the need for synchronized manpower diminished. Engines are so much more efficient than wind and men, but they don't sound as nice. While sea shanties no longer are needed on ships, the shanties themselves live on. Some of the most well-known shanties today, like Barrett's Privateers or Wellerman, are not really sea shanties. They all came out in the 20th century but are inspired by the original shanties. Now I'm not shitting on all these songs, Barrett's Privateers is what inspired me to make this video, but it's not technically a sea shanty. The shanty form itself crops up everywhere today. Perhaps the best known shanty of our generation is actually the theme song to SpongeBob SquarePants. We see a painting of a grizzled captain acting as shanty man, calling, Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? And the audience, unable to resist taking part in the centuries old maritime call and response tradition, yells in unison, SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm -hmm. 